I had a really good response rate, actually, surprisingly. I didn't think I would, but I did. I think You did? What did you get? Uh, 80% or something? I got eight, yeah. I got eight back, yeah. Eight out of ten, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was really happy with that. And uh, Oh, by the way. You and it, the and you married the most beautiful one of, of them all. So, <laughs> again, course. kudos. Of course. <laughs> Maybe introduce yourself, how old you are, what your profession is, and, um, yeah, how did you find such a beauty? Yeah, of course. Ha happy to do that. So, uh, my name's Gary. Uh, I live in the UK, actually, in the, in a part of the UK called Wales, in in the su southern part of Wales. And um, my my match, well, my my dating story, as far as uh, Ukraine um, is concerned, started really at the um, the sort of tail end of 2020. So, uh, sort of about 18 months plus ago, really. Um, at that time, I was. Um, 54 years of age, and um, I'd come out of a, a long-term relationship, and um, really, I, I took the opportunity to just think about what I wanted for my future, really. So, um, I started um, I started to obviously look what may be available locally. Actually, several years previously, before my long-term relationship, I had sort of looked at what was then something called Blue Sapphires, which some people may know about, some people may not remember. It was a sort of predecessor to AFA. And it, it, it was the same sort of thing. It was a, a PPL type operation. And um, I sort of dipped my toes in a little bit, but I didn't commit myself too much financially. And then I met a local woman and, and sort of put it to bed, really. So when this relationship ended, I thought, do you know what? I, I sort of fancied the idea again of, of looking um, again further afield rather than outside of my sort of own um, sphere, if you like. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's how I started looking at it, really, is, um, is what may be available in, 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 uh, you know, in Ukraine. And I um, started doing a bit of internet research, um, looked at, actually, AFA and a few of the others that were mentioned earlier on. But then um, that actually happened across you guys. And I started watching your videos, basically. And um, one I remember in particular was about the um, the lie detector that um, Tatiana took. And I thought that was really fascinating, a really good idea, too, in terms of, I guess, the, the proof of the pudding, you know, and, and seeing that um, you were prepared to test your own people, put those results live out. And I thought that was, that was fairly unique. So that was something that sort of attracted my interest. So I started sort of poking around your website, really, look, looking at what was available, who was there. And um, it, it sort of went from there. So unlike the other guys, I, I wasn't really, you know, um, drawn into the whole PPL thing. I saw it for what it was fairly early on. And, um, you know, I, I sort of dipped my toe in the water with, with much guarantee. I took, at the time, there was some sort of, I think, some sort of deal around. You could pick, um, you know, 10... <laughs> you could put ten to um, to put your um, you know your letter in. I had some coaching from Luba, prepared the letter and that went out to ten. I had a really good response rate actually. Surprisingly, I didn't think I would, but I did. I think you did. What did you get? Uh, Eighty percent or something? I got eight. Yeah, I got eight back. Yeah, eight out of ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I was really happy with that. And uh, oh, by the way, you and, it, and you married the most beautiful one of, <laughs> of them all. So I, again, of course, kudos. Of course, you know. Um, actually, she was. She was my first pick because of, of the ones, you know, so you don't tell the 10 who your favorite is, but you said... Don't ask a question. Can I... <laughs> did, did she marry you because she has a secret fantasy about handcuffs and police? <laughs> she loves the man in uniform? <laughs> well, what, one of my photos Elena's was in uniform, me. actually. <laughs> But, um, yeah, she never made much of it, to be honest. But um, I, I would, once we'd started sort of dating, uh, video dating, you know, I used to send her the odd picture when I was at work sort of thing. So, um, yeah, she was always interested in what I was doing and, and sort of things I was up to. But, um, of course, the biggest challenge for us was, was COVID mm -hmm. because uh, the whole thing started... Um, really, in terms of our first review date, September 2020, and we were still very much in the throes of of COVID. So yeah, basically, you met her. Uh, she was your first Skype date, right? And it was she during was. COVID. 
Yeah. She was, yeah, COVID. absolutely. And you had to nurture that relationship until you could fly out of the UK to Ukraine. What, yeah, nine months? Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect to have to wait as long as, as we waited, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think the first video date we had was the beginning of September. It was the, you know, the one that you offered before you become a client. Um, at the time, that, that was the case. So, um, yeah, I had that video date. It went superbly well, you know, much better than I thought because... I thought she was really attracted from the photos and that's really how I picked her. Plus she could speak English, good level of English. And, um, and she was a, you know, a professional lady. So, you know, it ticked a lot of boxes for me just from the profile. So, um, yeah, you, you set up the date and again, Luba helped out with the date. She was my sort of dating coach uh, from Match Guarantee at the time. And, um, we got a, like a house on fire, literally, you know, we, we, I think we were allocated about 20 minutes, half hour for that initial video date. I think we were still talking about an hour and a quarter in. And Luba sort of came and said, look, you've had efforts too long, you know, and, um, you know, maybe you want to follow up afterwards type of thing. And um, I, I remember it made me laugh, actually, because I remember part of your coaching is if you're interested in the lady and, you know, uh, you want to carry on, you must ask before the end of that first video date whether she's prepared to stay in contact with you. So I had this line ready. I had it there. I thought, yeah. This ask is for the number. Ask for yeah. the number. Yeah. I was going to go for it, but she beat me to it, actually. Yeah. She yeah. actually said, I want to stay in touch. So, so you know, I, I sort of... Now that you're married to her, you understand <laughs> why, right? Yeah, <laughs> it all makes sense. <laughs> So really, yeah, it, it was sort of from, from the get-go, really. But, um, yeah, I, I never expected to have to wait as long as we did end up waiting before we met in person because it was sort of September time. COVID rules were sort of relaxing in the UK, although there was still a, an international sort of travel ban, really. That you could only travel for what, what they were calling essential purposes. So I knew we, I, I wouldn't be able to see her, but we sort of tentatively arranged, look, let's, let's think about New Year. Let's see if we can meet New Year, something like that. So I thought it's far enough in advance. It's three months away. You know, surely we'll be okay to, to meet them. Um, but no, it carried on and it rolled on and it rolled on. And we made several, you know, dates to meet when I would fly to Kiev to, to meet her for the first time. But they all <laughs> fell foul of COVID. Can I please pause you for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, here, I just want to make point for guys that, uh, you know, you it, it's this COVID lockdown. It wasn't something that under your control. You know, it's not like it was you, not your desire not to come and meet her, right? Yeah. You you yeah. was in this situation when you have you know to keep this distance and you cannot you know affect on it, right? And no. you was able to buy tickets as soon as the lockdown finished and come to her, yes. right? Correct. Uh, and, and that's the key, guys, you know, because uh, when we start this long uh, distance relationship, some guys think that it's okay to be in a relationship for half a year, one year with no planning to come. And, and, and this, it just will lead you to the wrong path, you know, it, it will break up your relationship, you know. One situation when you cannot influence this, another situation when you don't plan, you know, and don't notice, especially now during war, it's this time like become cut it to one, two yeah. months. Yeah, to to meet as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100% because we never intended to delay it. The plan was- How, how, do, you Brits, how do you Brits call your ass? What, what, what slang term do you have for the ass? Get off ass, your ass. Ass is okay. Uh, ass is okay. Get off your ass, guys, is what we're saying. You got to get off your ass. Tip number one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're right. So we always intended to do it. It's just we, we were physically presented. And actually, I remember booking, you know, flights on, on in advance on a number of occasions. And every time we couldn't go, there was that almost that sense of disappointment, okay? Uh, and, and what I would say is, it did become a little bit strained because we sort of got to the point where as keen as we were to meet each other, we almost thought, this isn't going to happen. You know, we thought, it's going on too long. Will we be able to sustain it without meeting? You know, um, and I think it was, as I said, we had the first video date beginning of September um, 2020, and we met for the first time towards the end of May 2021. So you can see it was eight months or so of uh, eight months plus or so of, of sort of video and dating and, and calling. Initially, that was 
fairly limited, a couple of times a week maybe, once or twice a week. We would have pre-arranged it initially through Viber and then through WhatsApp um, after the, I became much guaranteed client of the course. And um, then it sort of momentum grew. We were speaking two, three times a day most days um, up, up until the point I arrived really. But, you know, there was still that nervous tension when I flew, even though we'd been in the video dating um, situation for sort of eight plus months, because we still hadn't met in person, of course. So we still didn't really know about chemistry. We still didn't really know, you know. Tell us, tell us, what what possessed you to fly in and meet her after, what, nine months of uh, Skype meetings with a ring in your pocket on the first weekend. Tell us, tell us what possessed you and how did it go? <laughs> we um, we used to have long and, and meaningful conversations, okay, on video for the most part. And, of course, we would test each other. We would say, so, you know, when do you think you might want to get married? And, and what would be the deciding factor about it? So we were sort of feeling each other out a bit, really. So, you know, I got to the point after eight months, I thought, do you know what? I haven't met this person physically, but... I think I already know her very well. It was almost like an eight-month courtship because I think we'd exhausted every possible subject. Well, and you but, had had already how many baths together? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was a, that was always interesting because, you know, she was very busy, uh, as was I, and um, so we often, you know, the catch-up sometimes was late in the evening and, and she used to love lying in the bath. But... I never got a sneaky peek at anything. Never got a sneaky peek. She's a really traditional lady, so it was, you know, it was head up. So I could tell she was in the bar, but but never, never a sneaky Stop peek. That, huh? I, I, and also, um, if she ever needed to get up, she would just turn the screen off. So, like, I <laughs> promise, you know, I promise I'll close my eyes, but, uh, no, I, I never got a sneak peek. Close my eyes. <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> I, I, so I never got a sneak peek. So, um, yeah, it was... Um, okay, it so was, you flew in on the weekend yeah. to meet her with the ring in the pocket. Yeah, I did, I did. Uh, with the ring in my pocket, with the intention of asking her, but still subject to how it would be. So she had no knowledge that I had this ring. And, and I didn't say, I'm coming here to propose to you. We were coming to meet, you know. Uh-huh. Um but yeah, I just remember something r- really well because, of course, it was still COVID. So we were, you know, masked up on the flights all through the airport. But it was at the time, actually, in, in the airports where people couldn't come into the terminal to greet you. So they had to stay mm-hmm. outside. So I just remember landing, getting my luggage, coming through. And, of course, there's nobody there. So my first thought was, what if she's not here? What if I come all of this way and she's just not here, right? Because there's nobody there. There's nobody there. But of course, as you walk through the terminal, you get to the glass doors and whatever. And I, I do remember seeing her through the glass. So she couldn't see me because it was like one way glass. But I, I, I do remember seeing her through the glass. And I just remember thinking, wow. She looks even more amazing in person than she does on video and photo. I just remember thinking, wow, it, it, it was just, she couldn't see me. I, re- I remember look, her looking to see where I was. That ring was like, coming out of the pocket already, wasn't it? I was just looking. I thought, wow, that, that was that was amazing. You know, she just looked sensational. And um, when I got through, she was still looking. She couldn't quite see me. And I just shouted, Elena, Elena, and sort of the look, you know, the look that's you because i've heard your voice so many times but i can't quite see you and um yeah we, we we sort of met you know it wasn't a big sort of like running along the beach embrace type thing it was it was it, it was just it was just a you know really good to see you really good to meet you sort of thing a little bit of an embrace and then uh, she really thoughtfully got some coffees for us you know and um some pastries and things like that to, to eat in the car so she made some plans, and I was really impressed with that. And um, you know, she she drove us then to to the hotel I booked um, for for the weekend. And I was the proper gent. I gave her the option. I said, "It's up to you if you want to stay here or not. It doesn't matter. We, we can spend the weekend together. I don't expect you to stay with me in a room if you don't want to." Type of thing. So, you know, we we, we were yeah, so yeah. we we made it relaxed from the, from the off. But again, the other thing I was really impressed with is that you know. We obviously knew what dates I would be there. And it was a long weekend. It was Friday to Monday. Um, 
like a full itinerary, you know, a full list of things that we were going to do together and places we were going to visit and, and just a lot of thought and attention into that initial meeting that, um, you know, that she'd set up. So, I mean, wait till later, please. <laughs> Be patient. Is this, is this an X-rated channel now? Is... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Well, I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, sorry. You're interrupting here. Okay. <laughs> no, so um, how it turned out, actually, I, I already knew that on the Saturday evening, the sort of second day I was there, we were going to be meeting her parents, okay? And obviously it's a big thing. Anna will know this. You will know it as well. Joe. It's a big thing, okay? Family approval almost is, is a big thing. It's very important to her. Especially, especially with a 17-year age gap. Yeah. Exactly. Like, did you hear Anna? Yes. When did you say it? Recently. <laughs> I was asking, how am I going to ask my parents? How am I going to tell my parents, my brother? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I cut it. No, it's more of a big deal. It really is. It's more of a... What? You cut it. What? Oh, she lied. Oh, my God. You did. You lied to your mom. I don't know. I just said something 40 plus, but I don't remember, like, close to 50. But That's right. You told your brother the truth, but you lied to your mom. Bad girl. <laughs> so, do you know what, right? I didn't want to blew up at the beginning. I, I, I think I was more conscious about the age gap than she was. You know, I was quite conscious about it. You know, I, I, I hadn't dated anyone that much younger than me before. You know, my, uh, my, my relationships, I guess, in the West were, were pretty much standard. You know, yes, the, the ladies were a bit younger than me, but no more than sort of four or five years. So that was quite a big age gap for me. Um, and you, you know, for her too, but <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And, and she was yeah. honest and, and she said, Look, I did, I did think about that, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't. It's not normal. I've heard Anna say this many times, you know, in the videos that it's not normal. Sometimes Western guys think, Oh, yeah, you can go there, it's like picking fruit from a tree, you know, we, we can pick these young girls and everything's gonna be fine. Uh, no, you know, it, it's all about matching, it's all about, you know, um compatibility and, and all those things as if it's just a two-year age gap. So it doesn't really matter. I think it's 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 um it's it's gotta be right. You know, it's, it's there's no guarantee that because you're a Western man that you're gonna be able to go there and pick yeah, up there's no match guarantees. Come on. Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely. And I read all your stuff obviously and watch your videos around the you know the zones of success and all that sort of stuff. So I was quite conscious. And actually she was the oldest out uh, age gap in, in the list of ten because in my list of 10, I, I picked ladies, you know, um, from the age of, at the time, she was sort of 37, going on 38, up, up to sort of um, late 40s. So, you know, I was quite realistic. I did do a, a quite a spread, really. So, you know, I immediately thought anybody in their 20s, no, don't be such, for me, don't be such a fool, okay? I'm, I'm not insulting anybody, but, you know, who, who thinks otherwise. But for me, I thought, I'm not going to have anything in common with somebody in their 20s for a start. You know, and, 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 you know, no matter how active I feel and how, you know, how in shape I keep myself, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still, at the time, a 54-year-old guy. So why would I be chasing someone in their 20s? So, you know, I, I sort of, be, I was sort of realistic in my own expectations in, in that regard. But anyway, what I'll say is there are very, you know, there are many very, very beautiful Ukrainian ladies in their 40s and 50s because they tend to look after themselves very well. So you shouldn't really drive your decision-making, for me, purely upon age. It shouldn't just be, ah, 37 is going to be better than 42. You'd be surprised if you actually get off your ass and go there. Um, you, you'll see the quality, really. And, and um, you know, there's some, you know, beautiful, beautiful ladies in their mid, late 40s, um, you know, that are sensational, really. And uh, therefore, age for me wasn't a big driver. So I, I didn't pick Elena because, oh, I've got someone who's 17 years younger than me. I picked her because I saw compatibility, you know, in her interests, in her profession, in, in what she did. And, Yes, she was very attractive to me, no doubt about that. But um, you know, I, I did. You know, if if she had gone no, then it wouldn't have bothered me to to pick someone in their forties. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't a driver for me. It wasn't a driver. To mm -hmm. Talking about age gap, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how about in different in in 
I mean, if a woman has loving, very good relationship with her parents, normally, uh, f first question like, oh, it wasn't a date, was his name? Number one question, yeah, first name. And it's like from name, you can understand if he's Ukrainian or he's foreigner. And oh. then second question, second question, how old is he? You know, <laughs> not his occupation, nothing, how old is he? So it's yeah. like, you know, and uh, if woman really like a man, that's the time when, you know, you cannot blow up this relationship, even don't give him opportunity to meet parents, you know, because yeah, he can be yeah. you know, good looking or good, you know, you really like him. And then because of, you know, parents can have bad attitude. So it's, yeah, what women face and sometimes don't tell all, all, all how it is. <laughs> Do you know, I, I never asked her actually whether she sort of told them how old I was. Ah, there we are. That was our first. There you are. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought I'd put up the picture. It's been a long time since the video, so mm -hmm. just so we know, you can brag about her beauty on the photo. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first weekend, actually. That was one of the places we visited. So that's the first weekend we met. But I, that I, I was didn't... the first weekend, right? That photo, yeah, first, weekend. first weekend, yeah. Yeah, weekend we yeah. met and it was it was a, a beautiful yeah. spring weekend the, the weather was amazing in kiev all weekend you know uh -huh. so it, it was it was beautiful but yeah we, we had a fantastic time and uh, that was one of the sights but yeah i'm not sure she, that she sort of told them how old i was before i met them um uh, but uh. um but you know we we uh, again nervously going to their to their home isn't it with her i had gifts for them obviously you know and uh for her nieces and whatever as well. And um, yeah, I turned up, I thought it was just going to be her mum and dad, but it wasn't. It was her mum and dad and her sister-in-law and nieces and whatever. So it was almost like... Um, it was the whole family. family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, by this time, obviously, I'd, I'd had a couple of days with her. I was pretty, I was pretty set on, on proposing, really. So... Um, I had the ring, you know, she again knew nothing about it. Um, and, you know, we, we had a lovely dinner with the family. It was really nice. You know, they were obviously very interested in, in finding out about me. Um, she has a little girl. Um, so, you know, she she was around there as well. And um, oh, I just want to see comments. It is very right, Sasha. So, um, so yeah, I I I was. Your dad speaks good English, actually, and um, yeah. So um, <laughs> so so when she was away, sort of putting uh, her little girl to bed, I I spoke with her father and said, "Look, you know, I'm, I'm quite serious about um, Elena." Um, we you know, we've been, yeah, we've been dating now for. Yeah, I didn't do it. I'm traditional, but I I don't know. I didn't do it, bad boy. So I was like, I don't care if I get a yes or a no, so I'm not going to ask. <laughs> no, no, but later, I think. Yeah. You have to say yes. <laughs> you go to father, yeah? <laughs> no? So, yeah, I did I did sort of do the old thing. And, and you know, I didn't say, can I have your permission? I, I wasn't mm -hmm. that traditional. But I did sort of say, look, what would you feel about it? What would you feel about, you know, us, us being together, you know, uh, that sort of basic, uh, you know. Him, they they, didn't, so they didn't say. They didn't say this word. They yoki palki. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, but G Gary's. Uh, Did they say bojomoy? Irena's father huh? is uh, exceptional. He speaks English. Yeah, so yeah. My yeah, father doesn't speak English. Yeah. How he would not through Google Translate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would be funny. No, yeah. they, they were. You know, they were sort of well. You know, you're you're old. You know, not not sort of uh, insulting, anything, but you're both mature enough to, to know your own minds, and if you feel that you know it, it's something that um, you can you can make work with all of the challenges around um, culture and nationalities and all the rest of it, all the challenges you can have going forward, then we would support your commitment with this. You know, so it was like, okay, thank you very much, type of thing. So. Um, it was a while that actually I thought Elaine had left the apartment, but she came back later, and um, I, I just proposed her in front of her parents basically. And um, it, the funny thing was though, right? <laughs> there was a pause. There was a little pause. 
So, you know, I did the old will you marry me type thing and it was like a pause and I thought, this won't even the script. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you thinking about? Uh -huh. And it was this little bit of a pause. It was only like five seconds or something, but it felt like 10 minutes. I was like... <laughs> so, um, yes. <laughs> so there was this thought process. So I said to her, what, what are you thinking about? I said, well, it was just a really big moment. One, I didn't expect it. I really didn't expect it. I know we talked about it, but I didn't expect it. And secondly, when it came, I was just like, oh, just a little bit taken aback. So she said, you know, I, I just needed that little bit of a, hold on a minute, he's asked me to marry him moment um, yeah. before she said yes. And I remember then the funny thing as well. You know, I gave you the ring and she's very pleased and all of it. And um, the following morning was actually, we were out in Kiev again, we were off some coffee. And then she sort of started telling me all her bad points. <laughs> it was like, okay, can I have it back? <laughs> and it, it was just things like, oh, you need to know I, I, I've got to have a coffee in the morning. And, you know, uh, these are some of my red lines. I guess it was all the serious stuff that... Um, we hadn't gone into because we, I guess with hindsight we didn't know each other that well um, happy, despite the fact that we'd had eight months on video you know so I, I was just, uh, just saying look need to know these two things about me type of thing you know and, and I all, her say, perfect, you know, all her perfect imperfections yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, yeah 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 so um, well, Kimmer, you, you guys have very a very inspiring story and I can say what what you know i love your story but some of the things i love most about your story is that you know like the wartime is now the war, war yeah. you know ukraine's at war uh it's a terrible situation for ukrainian people um but guys have the same choice now as they did during covid you know covid was a two year long excuse i can't i, I can't travel i can't I, I disagree with you, and I tell you why I disagree with you, okay, is that mm -hmm. in COVID, I couldn't travel at all. In war, I could travel to Poland, Portugal, Spain, Germany, I could go wherever I wanted to meet these things. And if that was an option for us, we'd have taken that option, because we just didn't have the option at all. I just couldn't fly anywhere in the world. The only traveler was permitted was essential. So actually, I think it's easier now than it was during COVID, because mm -hmm. yes, okay, you have the war situation in Ukraine, and let's be honest, we've all seen the pictures, absolutely awful, okay? And Elaine is very upset, and, and you know, it, it's taking its toll on the family, really. But in terms of people wanting to develop relationships, I think it's easier now than it was during COVID, because, you know, if we, if we were just starting out now, then we, you know, and she was in Poland, I could fly to Poland tomorrow. Or if she was in Spain or Germany, I could just go to those countries. In COVID, you just couldn't fly. Mm -hmm. It was prohibited. And, and the fact I'm in law enforcement as well made it doubly bad because I had an extra set of restrictions that basically said, you know, you're not permitted to fly, not even when it's relaxed a little bit. You've got to wait until it's totally relaxed before you can go. So it just wasn't an option for us. Whereas for now, actually, it is an option for people to, to meet if there's compatibility and, and people have been matched. You can meet. Yeah, I completely agree. It was in many in many ways a worse situation than now. For me, um, because, yeah, you couldn't yeah, go. Meeting, meeting. Yeah. You, you couldn't. And so you, you know, you got off your ass <laughs> as soon as you I could, did. and you you went and made it happen. Uh, now, m mind you, you popped the question on the first weekend, and and you know, it, it you got to know each other after the marriage <laughs> in some respects. But hey, at least she didn't get away, you know. How's that no. song go? If you like it, put a ring on it. If you like it, better put a ring on on the finger. <laughs> you know? oh, um, I was so I love that about your story. Mm -hmm. No, I was conscious because you, you're spot on, right? I thought immediately this is a high quality woman. Okay, so you know, I think some Western guys are deluding themselves, thinking that. All of these Ukrainian ladies are desperate to escape Ukraine, right? And you're helping them out, you know? It's like, you know, you're a knight in shining armor. It's total bullshit, okay? Most of these ladies want to stay in Ukraine, right? They're not trying to get into a relationship with a Western man to escape Ukraine. 
No, the situation might be slightly different now. I'm not saying that, okay, that the war situation... But we see that. Be... We, we now yeah. have the evidence of that. I mean, there was at 1.5 million Ukrainians had left out of 44. That's yeah. still 10%. Yeah. But now they're flooding back. They're flood I don't know how many million have now yeah. come back. You yeah. can see they, they want to return to their homeland. So this I'll be honest with you, right? assertion is just bullshit. This assertion that it they is. want to latch on to a Western man to get out of Ukraine. Mm, fallacy. It's total, it's total bullshit. Right? And obviously I've heard mm -hmm. some of the stories, obviously about you know ladies, some ladies wanting green cards and then doing a flip. Okay. That isn't my experience or the experience obviously with with you know uh, the, the lady that, that I've been fortunate to, enough to meet, but you're right, Joe. Right, I, I, I identified you wrong. She's a very high quality lady, right? Most ladies let's, are let's very well. Uh, let's talk about that. Jack, Jack makes this uh, comment, but yeah. it's spot on. It, it's why you know you you got married. Uh, Peter and Ola are just about married. We just had a client last weekend that got married, and, and these are all well. You're the first date. Peter's the first date. Uh, David was maybe the fifth date, his wife. Why does it happen so fast? And can you talk about the quality of, for example, Elena? You know, you only dated yeah. Elena, so you can only talk about Elena. But uh, tell I us a little bit about your wife, about Elena. Who is she? You know, yeah. um, like that. Yeah. Yeah, of course I can. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I initially, I I, uh, I got the information from her profile. I, I knew it was, you know, very well educated. Um, spoke very good English. Um, th those are, you know, important important traits for me. Um, and I could see, you know, from the photos, um, a lot of the ladies there will go to sort of professional photographers for their photos. So, yeah, you might have the odd selfie, but then you'll see actually the effort they put in to almost like their portfolio. So it's like they've been prepared to spend a bit of their own money to, to sort of, you know, make sure that they present themselves um, in, in the best light, you know. So for me, I could see the effort that she put in. What sort of reinforced it? Obviously, the, the photos and, and the description is the initial bit of the attraction, the initial hook that sort of pulls you in. But again, I could just tell from the level of conversation that we were having um, on that first initial video date that this was really a high-quality lady, you know. Very well-spoken, very well-educated, multiple languages, you know, and I thought, wow, you could have your pick, you know. Uh, and, and we did get into this conversation later on down the line. What, why a Western man? You know, what, what, what made you look beyond? And it's probably the same reason as me, actually. She just wanted to broaden her horizons. She had no particular desire, for instance, to come to the UK. That, that wasn't anything which was on her bucket list or anything, okay? In fact, didn't she try to get you to come to Ukraine? She did. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you something, if that was, if that had been an option for me at the time, and if she'd have said, look, you know, or, or if, let's say for argument's sake, it was, it was not the case that I needed to stay here for my employment or whether that I could have gone there, and that would have been, you know, if that would have been my choice, her preference would have been that we would have stayed there, okay? So in no way was she looking to get out of Ukraine and come to the UK. She's here now, obviously, with, with, with me, and, and, you know, this is where, where we live. But, yeah, it, it's a fallacy to suggest that these ladies are desperate to get out. It is true about the quality, okay, and I, I think you have to look, you know, at the, at the, again, the compatibility, you know. So I'm a university-educated man myself, you know, I'm a professional guy that's developed a career. So I was looking for similar type of qualities with someone who also had a professional career and, and whatever. So I guess, you know, there are many, many beautiful, no disrespect, many, many beautiful words, who, girls who maybe don't have that. And they would have been as physically attractive, you know. But for me, I wasn't I wasn't looking for just physical attraction. I wanted compatibility. So, you know, to me, she's a very, very high quality person. She's extremely well educated, you know, um, more than me, <laughs> okay, if I'm honest. Yeah, um, she's a uh, psychologist or a psychiatrist? She is, yeah. she's, she's a psychologist. She's a PhD, so she's um, Dr. Elena. Um, and, um, you know, similarly, her parents are also very well educated. Um, so, you know, it's um, it sort of runs in the family type of thing. Her, her brother, who is still in Ukraine at the moment, who's uh, helping the war effort, um, he's, uh, you know, sort of project manager type 
uh, resource by um, by sort of profession. He's coordinating fuel and food supplies there, you know, for the for the for the resistance uh, response, etc. So you know, they, they're all of a of a similar quality group, if you like, and um, you know. Um, yeah, I, I think she's, uh, you know, she's fantastic, really. You know, it's, it's not just that she's Ukrainian. She's a great person, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it helps that she's very beautiful as well. Oh, wonderful. Um, what was I going to ask you about? Um, I remember uh, uh, uh-huh. you say on the wedding, uh, when you invite your uh, UK guys, families, friends, yeah, yeah they yeah. was very impressed with Ukraine, yeah, with Ukrainian people, like they yeah. thought it, uh, like poor country with yeah we have different opinion from the beginning before they experience it right and One. that's why mm-hmm. yeah I, I think that's the key why you know like maybe uh, western people until they come to ukraine they can have imagination it's a poor uh bad economic country that uh ukrainian women desperate to leave but in reality when they come there they experience uh traditions uh, uh life there you know how like so many advanced uh, IT services, uh, like yeah. uh, so many things that, <laughs> you know, like cheap at the same time, very high quality. And there, there's yeah. many great things about living in Ukraine. And when guys come and see this reality, they like, okay, now, you know, I changed my mind about, you know, Ukrainian people who they think that they're desperate. And mm-hmm. come on, maybe it was a situation when, you know, in memory from when Soviet Union crashed, then bad economic, no, you know, nothing to do. Uh, maybe that time it was, uh, you know, like to go somewhere because it was so bad. But now, hey, Ukraine already, you know, for 30 years been an independent country, building their economy, uh, having a lot of, you know, brain, yeah, there who, uh, who works for international company as well for Ukrainian companies building up uh, economy and there is a lot of great things and uh, plus we have uh, we have internet right now we have like all, all the world like on a hand right so people can see like Ukrainian person who lives in Canada or in America how tough and not easy you know to settle there you know it's very different life from Ukraine. And they hear all this story and it's not, uh, you know, it's not something very attractive to many of them. They hear about homesickness and, you know, all, all these things. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, these all videos, they make them very down to earth with the expectations about life abroad, you know. And uh, it's, you know, uh, <sighs> That's why it's one more reason why, you know, Ukrainian people think, okay, you know, it's not about where I live, it's about with whom I live, right? And I, where, how I build my life, you know, what I'm mm-hmm. doing in my life, you know? I, I agree everything you said. I absolutely agree with it all. Um, for me, again, okay, uh, I had this view of Ukraine as it was in the Soviet Union, okay? There would be people, people queuing for bread, you know, very austere, grey, not particularly inspiring, you know. Uh, and, uh, of course, when I started to look into it, this is before I, I sort of made serious intentions to go there. I could see it's not like that at all, actually. Um, and I could see, you know, um, uh, sort of um, uh, videos of Kiev and whatever. Crikey, it looks really good. Well, when I went there, I was blown away, literally. I thought it was an amazing city. Okay, In fact, it's been heartbreaking since the war's broken out, seeing some of the destruction there. Thankfully, Kiev hasn't been as badly affected as some other areas. But it's quite heartbreaking seeing places that I've been to on several occasions, you know, with with sort of defences and bridges blown up and stuff. And it was like, how could you do this? This city is as cosmopolitan as Paris or Amsterdam. You know, anywhere in Europe, Kiev is as cosmopolitan. The food is as good, the service is as good, the quality of the accommodation is as good, the public transport system is amazing, the metro system. Do you know what I'm saying? It had everything as a city for me. And, um, you know, to, to, for people to think it's some sort of third world, you know, um, poor place is, is not true. The only thing I will say is, once you venture out of Kiev and you start going to the village areas, there you see a little bit more traditional, okay? So 
I think in some of your earlier videos, Joe, you, you show village life and, and how it looks. Mm -hmm. And there is a bit of a stark comparison, okay? But having said that, they've still got internet. You know, they've still got these other things that you would expect. It's just that I thought Kiev was, was amazing. I was actually mm -hmm. looking forward, and we had plans this year, you know, to go to Lviv and yes, and other places, you know, yeah. uh, until the situation broke out, you know. So, yeah, absolutely 100%. It, it's not the austere Soviet country that people think it is. It, I, I came away thinking, you know, it's it's impressive, it's cosmopolitan, it's modern. Um, there's, you know, you've still got the mix of the past, so you can see the history in terms of where it's come from. But I'll say something else, and I said it to her at the time. There was money there. You could see money, okay? So, you know, you would see, you know, as we would say in UK, Range Rovers, you know, and Jaguars. And stuff. You'd see that there's money there. So to think that it's some sort of, like, poor place, again, where people are desperate to escape. No, it's not, actually. And, um, yeah. no, you, you can, if you had a mind to, I think, have a good life there, you know, pre-war, obviously, and we'll have to see what happens now. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. It was a good quality place. Gary, let's talk about um, the silver lining that you got to experience and you got to benefit from, which guys now during, honey, a bit distracting. <laughs> Don't invite me on the live stream. It's a distraction for you. Uh, what was I talking about? What's my name? The silver line. Uh, the sorry, we've got to end the live stream. It's emergency <laughs> end to the live stream now. Bye bye. <laughs> Honey, mm. come on. Okay, I'm doing more water. You want water? Uh, okay, please. Let me let me just okay. say we're we're um yeah, about the silver line. Um yeah. So guys now during the wartime, they have this opportunity to come and meet their lady in Poland or Germany, wherever she is. If it goes well, they can invite her to Canada, America, Australia, UK, um, and save a shit ton of money on the fiance visa fee. $10,000 in Australia just for the fee, even if she's yep. approved, that fee is gone. UK has about a ten thousand dollar US fee as well. Yeah, well, she. Yeah. Um, like you saved uh, that is the point. Yeah. You you saved that because she came during wartime. Um, yeah, yeah. tell we us did. a little bit we about did. that. Yeah. We did, yeah, because you know we, we sort of knew in advance when we were planning that you know the whole immigration thing was going to be costly, okay, um, both financially and and in terms of time, in terms of preparation of the documents, because. I don't know what, I can't speak for the other countries, but certainly for UK, it was very intensive in terms of documentation. Okay? Mm -hmm. It was a big sort of bundle like this. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we were paying a third party company in Kiev to help us with the whole immigration thing. Okay, um, But we still hadn't paid the fees yet in terms of what we were ultimately going to pay. So not only was it the immigration fees, but within the UK, we have something called the National Health Service. So, you know, every, every you know, UK citizen is a member of that in terms to, to sort of free healthcare at the point of use. But, of course, people who are em emigrating into the UK have to pay for this, OK? And, and that was a fee. If you wanted to work in the UK as well as the immigration fee for coming in, you had to pay that extra, you know? So there were there was these incremental fees. So by the time you added everything up for, for Elena and the little girl, um, yeah, we, we were up around uh, 10,000 US, Okay, in, in terms of that fee, we were just about to pay that for them to come when the war broke out. So, of course, everybody disappeared. The, the UK embassy closed in Kiev, so we couldn't actually physically progress it. Um, but then, you know, the UK, as have many other countries in the world, they brought in specific schemes um, for Ukrainian residents, uh, refugees, as they're classed uh, to come here. Um, and we took advantage of that. So, actually, we saved 10,000 US because they didn't have to pay those fees. So, um, you know, it, it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't like to describe it at this, but it's the only positive that's come out of this whole thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. As far as, you know, um, what what's happened. So, yeah, we, we did save. And I'm aware now most of the other countries who have previously had visa requirements and, and finances, you know, financial requirements for that. It, it disappeared. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's lightning fast. I mean, yeah. Anna and I and the family, well, not me, I'm Canadian, but they were approved in basically two weeks. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, we have other clients that were approved for America. Their ladies were approved for America in a week. Yeah. Um, it's just everybody is so fast. It's such it a is. huge plus now. Uh, and, and, actually, and, reason. Yeah. and actually for us, not just Elena and um, and our, our little daughter, but um, I've got her mum and dad here at the moment, okay? And again, their visas are free and they've got the same visa, so it entitles them to, to stay here for up to three years. Mm -hmm. And they can work, access services, you know, um, due to my terms in the UK, regulations. Yeah, that's true. I can see the message there. That is true, and that's why the, 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 the immigration processes are so rigorous, because in the UK in particular... There was a history, not so much with Ukrainians or East Europeans, but certainly with Asian uh, women and, and people from the Philippines who are marrying British men. And they'd just been scam marriages. And as soon as they got their passport, they were off. Mm -hmm. So I understand why it became like that. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so, you know, Rudy's right there in terms of, um, you know, there mm -hmm. being extra rigor on it. But what I was going to say was, yeah, so her mum and dad are here at the moment on the same scheme. Again, their visas were, were, were free. So previously mm -hmm. that would have cost, again, similar amounts of money for them to be able to spend any, you know, yeah. significant period of time here beyond visa. We've just mm -hmm. had, as well as, like, we've got a house full at the moment, okay, so as well as Elena's mum and dad, and they're all very welcome, by the way, um, we've got her sister-in-law and, and her nieces um, here as well. So, um, they've, again, they've come in on the free visa scheme. So... You know, it really helps with the family relationships because Anna said something earlier I wanted to comment on. Homesickness is a big thing, okay? And I, I knew mm -hmm. even before Elena settled here that she, she was going to require regular contact with her family, okay, and, and regular visits back to back to Ukraine. Um, and we'd agreed that, you know, we said, yeah, it's important for you because the culture is different, okay? Obviously, she's got English language, but it's still a challenge sometimes. Um, and, you know, you, you miss just not being with like people or having like people around. As, as warm, as welcoming as my family have been, and they're all really supportive of me. They love it a bit, okay? The, the reality is that um, it's it's very, very stressful experience moving countries and adapting to new culture. You talk about coming here with no job, you know, et cetera, et cetera, not knowing anybody, trying to settle into a new neighbourhood, trying to find schooling for a little girl, many different things that are challenging and difficult to adapt to, which obviously comes after that sort of romance of getting married and all that good stuff, isn't it? It's the practicalities of living together as a married couple. And we've had our stresses and strains in that regard. You know, no different to any other relationship in, in, in that regard, and we're working through a number of those now. But, you know, it's... Um, it's a big thing for for Ukrainian ladies to leave Ukraine and go and live somewhere else. It's not oh you should be you should be grateful or any of that bullshit. Okay, they they genuinely miss their homeland and their their relatives and everything else as you and I would you know, if you move away. And and this has been a huge plus for Elena to be able to have her parents right to help with her amalgamation into yeah. UK society right to help with yes, the home. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's made a big difference, Joe. To be honest, it, it's it's mm -hmm. really helped. Our plan was actually that her, her mum at least would have come with her initially anyway to help with that transition. So you know, but again, I was going to pay for that, you know. So it, it was going to be that she was going to come for a period. Um, as it turned out, you know, they, they've had to flee because the area they were living in was was a, sort of under direct threat at the time. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, they, they're very welcome to stay here as long as they like. The reality is, Joe, most of these people will go back to Ukraine when they feel it's safe enough to do so. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I hope that's not the case with Elaine. Because yeah, the, well. the experts are saying may, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> of, course not. of course not. But the experts are saying maybe uh, maybe only a million, or that's what they're expecting, will permanently stay out of Ukraine. Like attrition, Ukrainian people lost um, because of yeah. the war. So here's my favorite question. And you and I know each other fairly well. Lots of heart to hearts. If um, Gary, if today's Gary could go back in time to before you met Elena and tell you, the younger Gary, uh, one year younger, yeah, what would be the top three things, um, tips you would give him as to what would you do differently on this process? 
Wow, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you give me the headset? <laughs> well, you know my style. We don't script uh, anything. We just uh, fly by the scene. Um, do you know what? Oh, crikey. Um, I, I think... I think for me, I suppose, we've we've had the bumps, I think, post-marriage that we would have had pre-marriage had we not married so quickly, okay? Now, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, because you can have the bumps anyway. I, I guess for us, because we'd already made the commitment we got married, we would we worked through the bumps, if you like, and we did have some big bumps, okay, you know this, okay? So, you know, we we sort of worked through. So for me, right, the, a big mistake I made, right, and, and I give this advice to any Western man, I thought going to Ukraine and meeting a Ukrainian lady, okay, would be the same as meeting a Western lady, and it would just be the same sort of relationship and you'd instinctively know as Western people do, you know, how to react to certain things and, and no, <laughs> the culture is different, okay? Their reactions are different. Their expectations of you are different. The role of the male person in the relationship is, is in their eyes, different. So for me, if I was speaking to younger Gary, I'd say, try and understand a bit more about the cultural differences that you're going to go into because that's caused some friction between us because my expectations of her would be my based on my experiences with the relationship with Western women and they're not the same. Similarly, she would say the same. Her expectations of me would have been based on her experiences with basically Ukrainian men. She'd been married before, so you know, she's mm -hmm. married to a Ukrainian man previously. So we both had that little bit of a, a misunderstanding of, well, I thought you meant this. No, well, I meant that. Well, I expect you to do this. You know, it's almost that. Because your, your experience is a bit, you know, your, your expectations in some respect are based on your past experiences and, and they're different. So I, I would say that's number one. Is the thing is, is a big thing. Secondly, international relationships are not easy. Okay. So again mistake, I'm, I'm ashamed to say this, was I thought, you know, like we've said, that uh, oh, she'll be so happy about being able to come to the UK, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying, that, you know, I don't have to worry about that bit of it, you know, she'll automatically want to come, and it's like, no, the reality is she's got to feel safe and comfortable, you know, and that the opportunity is going to be there, because she already has those things where she is, bear in mind, this was a highly qualified lady who had a really good job, Okay, which she gave up, you know, and all of that life. So the, the reality is don't assume that what you're offering is automatically better than what she's already got. Because in her case, it's not the case, actually, in some mm -hmm. respects for her. We're trying to re replicate that here. We're trying to replicate it here because I'm trying to think, hmm, she had a really good job, actually. We're going to have to work now to get the same sort of thing for her that she had previously because nobody wants to go backwards. So again, this land of milk and honey thing is, is bullshit, you know. Yes, I believe genuinely for her there are really good opportunities for her here in this country, okay, where she can earn, to be honest, a lot more money. But the standard of living, the cost of living is a lot higher here than it is in Ukraine. So comparatively, she's probably not going to yeah. be an awful lot better off. Okay. Yeah, it's just a different pond, right? Isn't and yeah. this one same same thing. I couldn't convince her to move to Canada until well, now the war came and uh, yeah. it just makes sense, right? But yeah, she was not eager to go to Canada either. Mm -hmm. Couldn't convince her. But yeah, you you have a better standard of living, um, yeah. you know, bang for buck kind of thing in Ukraine by a long shot, maybe four to one. Yeah, you know, Gary, that's fantastic. Two, two yeah. fantastic insights from a happily married man, you know. Maybe we can squeeze one more out of you. <laughs> well, I, I was racking my brains. I was talking about the other two. Um, I think the other thing for me is, despite the, the stresses and strains okay, of the immigration, the move to another country, the, you know, the, the, sort of the whole settling thing. Sometimes you, you have to sort of remember 
what brought you together in the first place, isn't it? So we're very, always very, very keen to have that, you know, those periods of romance because, you know, we, we have these date nights that, that, that we have, you know, at least once a week because we have a young daughter. It's, it's very difficult sometimes to have quality time, okay? So what we do is we make sure that we still have that interest in each other and that, you know, we, we, we spend time with each other, with nobody else around. And I think that's really important. Again, it's, it's for us, we're still relatively young in our relationship. We only got married last August. You know, I've only known her, you know, um, for, what is it, 18 months plus or whatever it is. Um, no, it's longer than that now, isn't it? It's coming up to two years, I guess, almost. Um, so we're still relatively young in our relationship. So it's important, I think, to still invest the time in each other because, you know, um, you can get lost in day-to-day -day life and I think you lose almost the, the reason as to why you got together in the future, which for me was that different cultural experience, a different type of personality. That everything that, you know, if I had hair, it would have caused me to pull my hair out. Actually, <laughs> actually was the reason why I went into in the first place for something different. And sometimes I have to say, Gary, you're moaning about this, but actually it's what you wanted. You remember? And, oh, yeah. and when we have a nice romantic date night, you remember, I've got a stunning lady. You talk about punching above your weight, okay, Joe? And you are punching above your weight, okay? <laughs> but I am massively punching above my weight in that stage, you know. I've got a really high-quality lady who is absolutely superb, you know. I, I can't speak highly enough of her. And um, it, it, was, it was worth, you know, all of the all of the waiting, all of the all of the hassle, really. And, I, I'm, you know, I'm convinced we've got a really long and hopefully happy future together you know there's nothing that makes me think at the moment that no this is a disaster and I should never have done it so I think if you're brave enough and if you're up for it then as you said get off your ass and actually do what you think you know you want to do but be prepared for it not being easy Wow. Such a deep, wise, inspirational message. We should post it everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, really this, this is going to be a, a clip we have to take and republish as a separate video because three amazing pieces mm -hmm. of advice. Absolutely. Very much. Fun. Yeah, and it's a reminder to us to have keep date, life, for a date, date night <laughs> alive because it's yeah, easy. Absolutely. You know, one week to go by, two weeks, one month to yeah. like, oh, we haven't had a date in a while, oh, yeah. honey. It's easy. Especially with easy. kids. And you have a, yeah. a toddler, basically. We do. And that, two and a half. That, two and a half, yeah. Yeah. Two and a half. So, oh, yeah. you know, they can take up all the time, as you know, okay? Take up all yeah. the time. So you have to plan that time and you have to, you know, you have to commit to it. And um, we're, we're lucky that we've got Elena's parents to help with that regard. But, yeah. uh, you know, you still got to make the effort because it's easier to do. Do you know what? We just lie in and we'll do nothing. No. Dress up. You know, put your glad drugs on. Remember how sensational this person looks. Because when I take her out, I shouldn't say this, but I see others looking and I think, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. With me, with me. <laughs> yeah, your glasses aren't foggy. Don't worry. You don't have to clean your glasses. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, we, that's, that's a thing. When you punch above yeah. your weight, you get a lot of. A lot of uh, uh, what do you call it? yodel Go Googlers? Yeah, Googlers. Yeah. What do you call it? What's the word? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oglers. Yodelers. Oglers. We would say. We would say Oglers. Oglers. Yeah, Oglers. Oglers. Yeah, just Oglers. people just That's looking at the Really? <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a little bit, Gare, what um, beautiful um, presence you have coming up in your in your future because um, you have the same as us or our young one. She put our, her makeup on today. She's starting at four doing makeup, right? As much as we oh. try to discourage it, you can't. I mean, she's got to do no. it. So you put on one blue eyeliner, one uh, pink, yeah, mm -hmm. and a little bit lipstick. And she did a, and she's practiced to do a video for everybody alive, but she had to go to sleep and she was very no, upset. No, she wake up already. Oh, she wake up? That she's still not live. She's ah, but present. she'll be. Post afternoon nap doldrums. So anyway, here's a pre-recorded of her, our little girl, and then we'll be right back. And this is what you can look forward to, Gary. Hello, everyone. One, two, three. I need to 
Isn't that amazing? It is, it is. Oh, I'm so in love with my little girls. It's amazing. It's amazing. What um, what do you think, Gare, about the critique about single moms? Um, because actually, your story is um, Elena had already adopted Dasha, right? Just yeah. before she had met you. So True. basically, she was a single mom. What what do you what do you say about the, the naysayers about single moms? That's a good it, question. It, it shouldn't, for me, you know, if you're up for it, it shouldn't, for me, be a negative. Okay. In fact, there are many positive. For me, okay, at um, as I was 54 years of age um, then, um, I thought the opportunity for me to have a young family had gone. Okay. If I was honest, I'd been in two long term relationships previously, um, and, and neither of whom had, had you know, um, expressed any particular interest in, in having a young family. I always wanted it, but I never pushed it enough, I guess, because, you know, like most things, you, you're involved in your career and everything else. So I never really pushed it. So I actually got to the right book page that I got to and thinking, it's passed me by, okay? Um, so when I, when I sort of met her uh, and when I was looking generally, it wasn't a, a thing that I was particularly negative about, okay? Even though I'm not particularly experienced myself with bringing up children, of course, I've got nieces and nephews. My sisters have children, you know, friends and family um, around me had them. And I always felt comfortable. So something I always thought I wanted. So I think it's very, it's a very individual thing, Joe. But I would say it would be wrong to say, oh, no, 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 I don't want it. It's a negative. Because there are moments of pure joy, as you will know, okay, with, with a young man who looks up to you. Many moments, every yeah. day. Yeah. Who, who, who looks up to you, who takes your guidance, who repeats things after you. And, of course, I, I've got a sort of bilingual child, really, who's, you know, whose native language um, is Ukrainian stroke Russian, um, who's now w will sit and watch, you know, nursery rhymes, as we call them in this country, with me. And, you know, she says English words back to me, you know. So, um, you know, we, we have this little game where, you know, I'll say something in, in, in Russian and she'll say it back to me in English. And, you know, it's that development is because of, of where we are, you know, um, and she's in an English-speaking nursery now here. So, you know, it, it I would say is, okay, for me, it adds to the relationship. It doesn't detract from the relationship. So it's not something that makes me less positive about being with Elena. It actually adds to that story. So I'd say to anyone, really, don't write it off. Don't look at it and think, I don't want children. It's baggage or whatever. It depends on your mindset. You can get joy from it, real joy. And the children, moreover, will get real joy from it as well. So don't be negative about it. Would be my advice. Unless you're dead set against it, obviously. If you're dead set against it, there's no point. Well, what do you, what do you say um, about the differences? Because uh, about... Western single moms and Ukrainian single moms because guys really rag on Western single moms, but they don't know what is a Ukraine single mom. Do you see a big difference? What's your perspective? Yeah, it's a good point, actually, Joe, because not once did Elena ask me to provide or give anything for her child, okay, before we got married. She never said, I need this, I need that. She saw her child as her responsibility, okay. She was very open with me from the outset about how important her child was to her and, and the role that the child would need to play in any relationship going forward. So she was very open and honest from the outset that, you know, um, I would I would have to step up, okay? Um, and, you know, for me, it was more about this expectation of, you know, well, you've got to pay for this, you've got to take that on, it's your responsibility. I never had any of that. I always had, you know, it, it's... It's our choice to be together with this child. If you, if that's what you want, and if that's what I want, and you know, you you will be, you know, a father to the child going forward. Um, I, I think my experience with with Western relations, because the first lady I was with did have children from a previous marriage. Um, 
was was a bit different in so far as you know, almost from the get go, it was a case of such and such needs this, such and such needs that. You know, it, it was it, it was more a case of you wouldn't necessarily be the person's father or the guiding light, but you would still be expected to to take on some of that responsibility. So I think there's a, there's a, there is a subtle difference. I think you know we're very much seen as a family unit. I mean, our little girl is adopted, okay? So you know, we we, we um, you know we, we bring her up as our own, you know, as, as we would. So she's smothered in love and attention from from everybody, really. But, but um, yeah, look, I, I, it's difficult for me to speak with any sort of authority in it because I've got no significant experience of children previously. That's all I know is it's you know there are there are moments of pure joy on a daily basis and. Um, you know, as much as it's hard sometimes when they're not very well and they won't sleep and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, you realise that yeah, it's a big job. It's a big job and you've got to be up for it. But no, the the rewards are, are there, you know, if, if you're mm. prepared to make that investment. But I, I, I've got nothing negative to say about it, if I'm honest you. I, I can't say that it's detracted from our relationship. It's added to it. But an old geezer who thought he would never have a young family and would never have someone calling him daddy. I never expected that. And now I've got it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is quite joyous. Very happy for you, Gare. I know. I know that I remember the first time um, the, our oldest daughter, she called me daddy first. And then I remember the first time our youngest daughter called me daddy. And uh, there's no better feeling in the world. It's uh, It's incredible. And yeah, I could go on in this for a long time about the difference between single moms in Western world and, and uh, Ukrainian in Ukraine. Um, but I'll, I'll leave this uh, for you. Um, I just think there's a lot of other differences and they're all pluses for Ukrainian women. So, um, so guess what? We have tallied the votes and we have the winner, um, guys. Uh, 10 seconds, we'll be right back. Imagine meeting as many beautiful traditional ladies as it takes until you meet the one. That's exactly what you can win right now. <laughs> so we have the winner. Don't, Are you guys don't ready? Don't give it to me. Don't give it to me. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> Unless you become Muslim. <laughs> but somehow I don't see Elena putting up with that. <laughs> Second wife. No, no, no. So are you ready? Do we have any drum roll or anything? No, I have no sound effects. Are you ready? So it's the guy that was, I think, scammed. Well, it seems pretty clear. We scammed the hardest. Um, and it's a hard scam, too. So $80,000. You guys remember Tim's story. So he is the winner. I think everybody had empathy for him. And uh, yeah, so congrats, Tim. You really deserve it. You've paid your dues. <laughs> now it's time for karma to come back to you in a good way. So congrats. I will give you a call as soon as our live stream finishes. Thanks, Gare. See you soon. Mm -hmm.